Welcome to the Diminutive Soldier. Diminutive, because it's really small. Today we're talking about a game from my childhood. Survive, Escape from Atlantis. This is the 30th anniversary edition. It came out a few years ago by Stronghold Games. It appears this game's still pretty readily available, but there's a great expansion for it, which we'll talk about a little later, that appears it's not readily available. And looking on Board Game Geek, it appears that it's not going to be back in reprint, which is very unfortunate. In Survive, Escape from Atlantis, you're going to be building an island on the map that's slowly going to be sinking, and you're trying to get all your little people, all your little minions, to each corner. Whoever gets the most safe at the end of the game wins. Simple, right? Well, there's going to be things that are going to try to stop you. There's going to be these um, krakens. They start on the board when you're setting the board up in each kraken spot. You can see them there, 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 there. So you'll lay those out like so. And then each player is going to be getting their little people. So let's say player one is going to be red. There's the little red meeples. Now you can play two different ways. You can play where it's just whoever gets the most meeples to safety by the end of the game wins. And that's how I play with uh, my six-year-old son who adores this game and is begging to play it all the time recently. Or you can play where there's using the numbers on the bottom. Numbers, there's several. There's a number uh, six, one, four, et cetera, et cetera. And how you play that way is as you place your meeples, you try to remember, you keep the number secret from other players. You try to remember where you placed them so you know where your highest numbers are. So when at the end of the game, not only when you're, when you're picking up your meeples, you flip over and whoever has the most points based on the bottom of their meeples wins. So it adds a, adds a layer of complexity because you're having to remember because you can't look at them once you place them. You can't look at the bottom again. You have to remember where you put those numbers and try to get those to safety, the highest ones, as your priority with keeping it secret because the other player may try to stop them. We'll explain how you do that. So how you set the island is there's tiles. There's wood tiles. Four, sorry. There's mountain tiles. And... There's a lot of sandy beach tiles. So you're going to start the game. Each player will go back and forth building the island, setting it up. Within this, you see the dark border here that goes around. You're building the island inside that dark border. And I'm going to go ahead and set it up, and you'll see when it's done. Here's the map as it's set up. The island's been built, you randomly place your tiles, and then each player places one at a time each of their meeples. Um, this could be a four-player game, there's blue, red, green, and yellow. Or when you play with two players, um, it really recommends you play with two different colors, as it just makes the game more enjoyable that way. So it could be a two-player game. You set up your meeples one at a time, and then each player also gets two boats to place anywhere they want next to the um, uh, shoreline, next to land. So that's your setup. And how the game's played is, let's say red player goes first. First, you're going to, if you have a terrain tile in your hand and you want to play it, you can. Of course, when you start the game, you're not going to have one. But what I mean by that is, for instance, some of these terrain tiles on the bottom, for, like this one. As the island shrinks on your turn, you can keep these red terrain tiles. This one says, the beginning of your turn, you play this terrain tile, you discard it, and you can move one, any boat up to three spaces. So, that can come into play later. But at the beginning of your turn, you can play any terrain tiles, if you have any, that you want. The next step is to move your explorers and or ships. And how you do that is you have a total of three movement points. You can move anything. You can move one guy three times. You can move 
three different people one time, but you have a total of three movement points. I'll show you an example how that pans out. I'm going to put this red guy on this boat. That's one movement point. Put that red guy on that boat. That's two movement points. You could have up to three people on the boat. There's little slots in there for them. And so my third move, I'm moving the boat closer to that island. Boom. Red player's turn is done. Now, I shrink, I sink <laughs> the island. Shrink, sink, whatever. And how you do that is you start all the um, sand, beachy land spots uh, sink first. Then once they're all gone, then the woods, once they're all gone, then the mountainous regions. And the game ends when one of the mountainous regions has a volcano on the other side of it. Once you flip that over, game over. Could be the first mountain region you flip, could be the last. Just, so I can strategically pick one, and let's just say I do this one. I make the blue guy fall in the water. Whoop, he's swimming now. I flip this card over. And the green side says it happens immediately. And what that mean, what that's saying is a whale spawns there. Here's a whale with a little token. He's going to spawn in the water there. There's whales. There are sharks that can spawn. And of course, you have your krakens. They each act differently. What a whale does is destroy boats. He won't harm people, but he will destroy a boat. He'll either, uh, an empty boat, he'll just destroy it. Or if he hit that boat over there with two dudes on it, the boat's gone, the two dudes swimming in the water. What sharks do, sharks will eat people. Any space they enter in, they'll eat the people. They won't hurt boats, so people on boats are safe. And what the krakens do is both. They will destroy boats and eat people. So if a kraken hit that boat, boat's gone, two, two guys are gone too. So that's how they, they play out. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, when a guy's in the water, you can only move him one space total. That's it. So it slows them down. Um, and of course, they're, when sharks come into play, um, it uh, gets a little more dangerous for them, obviously. So we moved our meeples. We drew a card. It spawned a whale. The next step is we roll a dice and see what kind of creature moves. The dice has the kraken on it, has a whale on it, has a shark on it. And each one of them are on the dice twice. So we roll the dice, and it says we move a kraken. And the kraken will only move one space. So I'm the red player. Uh, I don't want to move that kraken um, per se. I can't really move him farther away from me, just be equal distance. But let's say this kraken up here, I have no red guys on that side of the board. I'm going to move him a little bit closer to that boat. Krakens move one space at a time when they move. Sharks move up to two spaces, and whales move up to three spaces. So Kraken moved him up. Next, let's say it's a green player's turn. So green player is going to go one, two, three. He's going to fill that whole boat up. He's done with the movements. Now he shrinks the island. Say so he's going to take this one away from that blue player, make him swim. We're going to flip that card over. And so now the green player can keep this for a future turn. So on his future turn, at the beginning of his turn, he can play it to move any Kraken in any unoccupied space he wants. So on the beginning of his next turn, he may want to get that Kraken the hell out of there. He's going to play this card. Boom. We'll pop this crack in, say, over here, if that boat was still there. You can move him to any unoccupied space. That's a good card to have, and he'll keep it for later play. Now, end of green player's turn, he rolls the dice to see what moves. The whale. He can move the whale up to three spaces. It's going to look, there's only one whale on the board at the moment. Uh, he has no green people who can benefit from these boats. Well, he just says, screw it, boom. Destroy that boat. Take it out. Now boats, on the bottom of these island pieces, there's cards that spawn more boats. Of course, there's a lot of cards that spawn sharks, cards that spawn whales. There's also car, uh, 
on the bottom of some that spawn whirlpools. Um, probably not going to find one. Yeah. So what a whirlpool does, it will be a whirlpool image. It looks like this. And the whirlpool removes all swimmers, sea serpents, sharks, whales, ships, and explorers from the sea space that it was on, as well as from all adjacent ones. It just sucks everything into it. So there's those in there too that really every time you play the game is going to be different because, of course, the island's randomized and built different. There's so many variants um, every time you play. It's, it really is a blast. Um, fun family friendly game like i said my 6 year old kid loves it my 10 year old kid loves it i love it i mean it's it's just a blast now you're going to keep playing that as i said you're going to keep playing you're going to try to get your people to the islands etc cetera, etc cetera. a lot of people are going to end up dying from the the sharks that are going to po end up popping up and populating and people are going to be rolling the dice and moving the sharks to attack who they want to attack or moving the krakens etc cetera, etc cetera. And so you're going to have a lot of guys die, but you, hopefully you're successful. You get a lot of guys off the board, and you can play either way, where it's just whoever has the most, or count the bottom at the end, and whoever has the most points wins the game. There is, like I stated, there is an expansion. Now, it's hard to find, and I think it may be out of print. It's called Dolphins and Squids. It allows up to five to six players. Currently, this is a four-player game. And there's variants you could add to it if you want. The dolphin and dive dice, to me, is the best. It's a great one. What it does, it takes out the red dice. You don't roll this anymore. Instead of rolling that, you have these two that you're going to roll. One of them has sharks on it, has a kraken, has a boat on it, has a whale, has a star, which is... Anything you can move any any one you want, and has dolphins that are added to the game. Here's a cute little little dolphins here. Okay, and then you roll a second dice, and it says how much they move. And before with the red dice, if you remember, the whales you can move up to three, sharks up to two, krakens up to one. This randomizes it. Also has a D on it for dive. What that means if you roll that. They spawn, they, you could pop them up anywhere on the board in an unoccupied space. And when it comes to a boat, if you roll boat and dive, it's not actually dive in that case, it's drift, and you could pop the bo a boat up on any unoccupied space on the map. So you would roll those instead to move something. I can move anything I want up to three spaces. All of a sudden, those krakens become <laughs> very dangerous. Before, they could only move one space. You remember the red guy had those there? Now he goes, doom, doom, destroys that boat and kills those two red people. So it makes it can make the bad guys more dangerous. Um, it adds, I don't know, to me it just makes the game more interesting. What the dolphins do is see their card, I mean their images on the back of terrain tiles that show dolphins. I'll show you a picture of one instead of trying to find a terrain tile. Here's one that you get to keep. And in the basic game rules, you can play it to move one of your swimmers up to three spaces. He's riding the dolphin. Well, when you're using this expansion, you ignore that, and instead it just spawns a dolphin in that spot. So you would put the little dolphin there. Boop. What the dolphin does when it spawns, you can place one of your meeples, one next to the dolphin, and the dolphin protects him. So when anything moves in that spot, a shark or something, the dolphin protects that guy. You can only have one. Um, and so you can keep him safe that way, which is just a fun addition to the game. Here's another variant for giant squids. Here's the giant squid models, uh, meeples. Giant squids are pretty wild. Uh, they... It, when they get next to land, they'll just eat someone on the land. They just grab them. They'll even do it over here if someone's in a safe spot. And if a whale, the whales and giant squids are at war with each other. If a whale enters a spot with a giant squid, the whale will destroy it. A giant squid enters a spot with a whale, the giant squid will destroy the whale, and so forth. So it adds a whole other variant. 
I don't play with that one much. That one, to me, is a bit too brutal. Um, but that's the expansion. And like I said, it is hard to find, unfortunately, because I really think the one where it adds these dice and adds the dolphins is a great way to play the game. So let me give you my final thoughts. So Survive Escape from Atlantis. Now, like I said, this is a game from my childhood that I loved. And at that time, the um, only games I really ever played was Monopoly, Candyland, etc., etc. You get the point. And I had a friend named David who had this game. When I'd go to his house, we played it, fell in love with this game. This is probably the game that, like, boom, board games are great. What is this? This is fantastic. Loved it. Um, as I got older, I, I would remember playing the game where the island sank and the rest of the people had no clue what it was called. Just That was just lost to the wind. We'll never, never think of it or know of it again. And then, lo and behold, one day I was in a local game store, 30th anniversary edition, probably about 10 years ago or something, I guess. I'm not sure. Saw the back. This is it. This is the game. I was so excited. <laughs> and I have to say, it holds up. It still is a fantastic classic game. It holds up as an adult. It is a blast to play. It's a blast to play with my kids. It is a wonderful family game. The box says it's age eight and up. Like I said, my six-year-old plays it just fine. Um, you know, so it says about 45 minutes long. That sounds about right, 30, 45 minutes. I give it up for a family game, 8, 8.5. I mean, it's a must-buy, to be honest. Uh, my last really first review video, I was trying to be a little different. I was like, I'll scale things from like 0 to 100, with uh, 0 being broken and 100 being game changer. And I was why 0 to 100? Why am I complicating things more? Just make it a 0 to 10. 0 to 10, it's the same thing. Right? Let's be around. It's the same thing. So 0 is a game is broken. Hopefully, I never get one of those. Ten is a game is revolutionary, changing the genre, that type of thing. This is high. I mean, as a family game, it's a must buy. It's an eight or eight point five, one of those. Uh, if you can get the expansion, great. It adds some variety. It make it adds um, some differences to it. it. Does make it a little little more deadlier. But you do not need it. The base game is great as is to play with friends, uh, pretzel beer game, and to play with kids. And that's so unique to have a game that you can do both, that you can enjoy with a six-year-old and a 10-year-old, or you can enjoy with your friends just hanging out and chilling. Great game. Go get it before you can't find it anymore. Um, I did notice on Stronghold Games' website, this isn't on their website anymore. So I'm wondering if what's out there is... That's all it's going to be, and it's not going to be reprinted. Don't know. So get it while you can is all I'm saying. Diminutive Soldier, out.